You'll be turning your Bibles to the book of Romans, chapter 12, where we're we'll trying to study some this morning from God's Word. We're going to say this morning that we count it a privilege to be able to be here and to read God's Word and make a few comments on His Word, and we hope that we can be a blessing to each one. Uh, we've tried to study it this week, and we feel this is the uh, lesson that the Lord would have us to uh, try to teach this morning. So, in the in in the book of Romans, chapter twelve, verse one, very familiar scriptures, but <clears throat> there's a whole bunch of stuff here that's really uh, a blessing if you'll just kind of break it down and look at it. And, uh, and uh, John's writing here; he says to the church there at Rome. And, of course, he is writing to the brethren, so uh, we need to uh, clarify that. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Amen. And be not conformed to this world, but be it transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Now, in verse, back in verse 1 here, Paul, as he is writing to the church there, and he uses the word beseech, and uh, he had already uh, given some instructions on this, but he says, in other words, I beg you, uh, I beg you, uh, therefore, brethren, and uh, he's, he is talking to these church members of these brethren about their flesh. Mm -hmm. He's not talking, and of course, we, we, we know this morning that those that have been saved are saved with an everlasting salvation. We know this morning that he wouldn't have wrote anything concerning uh, their souls being uh to be uh, re-saved or that their souls are sinning because this morning, according to God's word, our soul does not sin once we have been born again. So he's talking primarily to their flesh about this situation, but he says, I beg you, or I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. And of course, this morning, in these mercies, uh, we, we see so many things as we uh, look in the word mercy. And first of all, this morning, God had mercy on us. He might have sent His Son, Jesus Christ, to the cross of Calvary to die for our sins. So that is a wonderful thing here. And, and Paul is bringing out by the mercies of God. Now, I would this morning read something to you in 1 Peter, if you would listen, just turn there or just listen to either one. But in 1 Peter... We will read a, a scripture. <clears throat> we can find it right easy. Bear with me and uh, we'll, we'll find it. But <coughs> First Peter 1 and verse 3, it says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. So we Amen. see here uh, what Paul is referring to in one place here about the mercies of Christ, that he, that he let his son Jesus Christ die for our sins, and that he resurrected him again, and he sits on the right hand of the Father in heaven. Now also, I wanted to show you something in the book of Psalms this morning, what David said, and, and you know you can probably remember all of it, but in Psalms 23, uh, concerning mercy, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He leadeth me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness 
for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. And this morning the Lord just spoke to my soul this morning while we were singing, there's a light in the valley for me. And David uh, confirms this thing this morning. He says that the Lord is going to be with us when we walk through that valley of the shadow of death. We're not going to walk through death. We're not going to go into death, but we're going to walk by the shadow of it. And listen, mm -hmm. I believe that one shadow is that this old flesh fears that. But it's just a shadow. It's not it's not the real it's not a real death because the real death is when that soul enters hell. And so he says here, he says, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou protect, preparest a table before me in my, uh, in the presence of my enemy. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Now notice, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. So this morning you have that promise. You have that promise this morning of the mercy of God. And uh, a lot of times we get kind of upset at ourselves and we, we get to wondering about what's going on and, 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 and everything. But listen, remember this this morning. You are saved. Amen. You have the mercies of God. And a lot of times the flesh wants to hinder and it wants to uh, tell the spirit things that is not true. But now you remember there is a there is a warfare going on within your body, and that spirit and that flesh are at warfare. And and if the body uh, does not obey the spirit, then we have a problem. And so here I believe what Paul is trying to get across to these people in this thing, he's talking about the mercies of God and how that we are to. Uh, let the spirit that dwells within us be over the flesh. Now notice here back in our lesson. Now notice he says, I beseech therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice. You, can, you, you cannot present your souls a living sacrifice because you have, you have no way of doing that and because of this that Jesus Christ when he died for the sins of the world and made it possible that your soul was saved. God done that. Your soul is saved with an everlasting salvation. But Paul says here, he says that to present your bodies a living sacrifice. <coughs> and that this morning is what we need to uh, really concentrate on this morning is that our bodies is what people see. Our bodies is what is presents God to the world because I can't see your soul. You can't see my right. soul. And so our bodies, is, and listen, a body watches a body. And a body knows the weakness of a body because, listen, that's the, the same spirit that the devil has. And he knows your weakness. And he knows this morning just how to press your buttons mm -hmm. and how to cause you to lay over night and worry about things that you have no control over. Uh, you, you lay there and you twist and you turn and think of the, uh, about what's going to happen to you and, and how the world condition is going on and these things. Listen, you have no, you can have no control of it. And so the thing of this, you need to uh, be, con be con uh, uh, concerned about how that you present your body uh, as a living sacrifice and, and to push these things out of your mind about that worry you because listen, when you come to church with a worry on your mind, with a worry about this and about that, listen, you cannot present your body a living sacrifice like you should be. Right. Listen, uh, the bodies of other bodies pick up on these things. And you can see somebody walking around all down and out, or uh, uh, you know, with their eyes red, where they, you know, all this. Listen, I, and I know we have worries, and all this, but the body picks up on that, mm -hmm. and they say, "Well, hey, what's wrong with you? What's what's wrong with?" You? And then, of course, you here you go, pouring it out. Well, the thing of it is, a lot of times, a lot of times, you don't, you just need to have to have that on your mind anyway. But the thing of it is, think about this. Keep. Keep your bodies under subjection and, and, and let them be a living sacrifice to the Lord Jesus Christ because he says here, holy, acceptable unto God, 
Now, what does he say? Which is your reasonable service. Amen. And so, uh, you know, this word reasonable, uh, we use, we used to, I used to hear a lot of people <coughs> using this. Well, that's reasonable to, to want to do this or that. Listen, it should be reasonable with us this morning that knowing that Jesus Christ sent his son to the cross and died for our sins, it ought to be reasonable that we want to serve God with our bodies as much as we do with that, that with our soul and our spirit. And so it's a, it's a reasonable thing that we should have a desire to serve the Lord. Amen. And so Paul is, and he's, he's strictly, he's strictly talking to them about their flesh because he calls them brethren and he, and a brethren is identified as being saved. And so he says here, uh, with a reasonable service and be not conformed, uh, and this conformed, I wrote it down where I could remember it, and I knew what was, but, but he says, have same form or to change to form of the world. You have the same, and he says here, and be not conformed, be not, be not like the world, be not like even brethren that are saved, don't be conformed to the world. And listen, that's, a lot of the problem with with our country today, so many people have, are conformed. Right, they're conformed to this world. They put their approval upon what the things is going on in the world. They may be saved, but Lord mercy, they're they're weak as branch water, mm -hmm. and uh, they have conformed to the things to the images of this world and to the things of this world. And listen, that's what they feast on. That's what they 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 get up in the morning looking forward to to feasting upon the things of this world, and so they're conformed to it. But he says here, he says, be not conformed to the wor this world, but be it transformed. Now, how are you transformed? Well, when you trance, you move, okay? He says, by the renewing of your mind. Now, he's not talking about your spirit. He's talking about your mind up here that rules this old fleshly body. There's nothing about your mind that is that is saved. It's part of the flesh, but it, it does rule the body. And the, the soul, the spirit that God saved has a connection with the mind and telling the mind, hey, you need to move that body in this way. You need to make that body do this. You need to do this. And listen, so many times we don't pay any attention much to the transform. We say, well, you know, uh, never do today what you can put off for tomorrow. I'll serve God tomorrow. I'll do that tomorrow. I'll read my Bible tomorrow. I've got things to do to, to satisfy this flesh today. And so the, the word transform is we need, to, we need to think about how we should be transformed. We need to pay more attention to what the Spirit says because Paul in his writings about himself, he says, I'm such a wretched man. Mm -hmm. I'm such a wretched man. Uh, the things that I want to do, and, and listen, I know Paul was transformed. I know that he was he was in the league, he was he was serving God, but he 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 says the things that I would do, I don't do them, and and it's the same way with us. We have the best intentions in the world sometimes, but you know if we're not very careful, we'll miss reading our Bible, mm -hmm. we'll miss praying, but we won't miss eating. Mm -hmm. We'll nibble all day long. If we're at the house where we can find it, we'll nibble, we'll nibble, we'll eat. But listen, you don't do the Bible that way. Right. You don't pray like that. You and that's that's the thing of it this morning. If uh, if in our process of of nibbling and uh, and uh, eating, we could uh, ch change that to reading the the Bible. And uh, studying God's word, Amen. Uh, we would we would be a lot closer to the Lord. We would be more pleasing to Him. We would be more a living sacrifice. And people, that living sacrifice is a, is is a big word. 
because when when you're a living sacrifice, uh, the law was a dead sacrifice. Mm -hmm. It 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 uh, it drained the blood. It took the blood out of the animal. The animal was dead, but we are a living sacrifice. We can speak to God our Father and to Jesus our Savior. And, and through the Holy Ghost, we can talk to them and be a living sacrifice uh, to, for one another and to serve uh, the world. I see David, man. It's good to see David come in. Good morning, David. Come Amen. on in and have a seat. Now, uh, here he says here, notice there, he says, Renewing your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And so by this, renewing, by being a, uh, 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 renewing your mind and being a living sacrifice, you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Now, you may prove it, and, and you know this morning uh, what the will of God is in most cases. And you know that you're not to, and of course, Paul's talking about the flesh and all this, but you know, and, and he, he, he really marked one down in fornication. Uh, and listen, we know, we know that we're not supposed to do these things. We know that we're not supposed to steal. We know that we're not supposed to use foul language. We know these things. And so these are some of the things that we should be uh, trying to improve our bodies with. And so he says, for I say in verse three, for I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. Amen. And here again is one of the things that the flesh loves to do. Mm -hmm. Regardless of how, what you say, well, listen, I know what the flesh is. You know what the flesh is. And the flesh loves to have praise. Mm -hmm. I mean, hey. It, 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 it's, it's common it's common knowledge that the flesh likes to be bragged on. The flesh, and a lot of people don't uh, don't accept it as a lot of others does, but you know, uh, most of the time when when uh, uh, somebody wants something from you, the first thing they do is start bragging on mm -hmm. So, but anyway, that's, but I'm trying to say that, to say this, that's the condition of the flesh. Mm -hmm. That's what we have to, to uh, live within. But he says here, he says, notice here, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, accordingly, as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. And, and uh, I have a bookmark here in First, in first Thessalonians. I want to read just a little bit concerning this. First Thessalonians 4. Uh, <clears throat> in verse 1, read this. First Thessalonians 4, 4, it says, Furthermore then we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus, that ye have, as ye have received of us, how ye ought to walk and to please God, so ye would abound more and more. Now here, here, is, here is a promise that you will abound more and more. Now that sounds pretty good. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you give, uh, you call someone over to him and say, "Hey, I want to tell you how you can make a thousand dollars real easy." He's all ears. Listen, the, God's word says here how that how that you can abound more and more, and that is be in the will of God. And to uh, he says uh, here he says uh, uh, so you ought to. Uh, to, he said, let me get to it. Uh, Lord, that ye have received of us how ye ought to walk and to, and to, uh, and to please God, so ye would abound the more and more. For ye know what commandments we gave you by the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification. Amen. Even your being set apart for the service of God. Uh, and he says here, this is, this is the way that we are sanctified uh, by setting ourselves apart or keeping this flesh under control. And listen, if, if, if we're saved, 
we can we can be sanctified be, by being set apart by by serving the Lord Jesus Christ. And this sanctified don't mean holy and ready to fly off. But listen, it, it means this that you're set apart, that you're set apart for his his service. Mm -hmm. And God has chose you. And listen, if you'll, you let, if you'll keep this body under subjection, you can be used of the Lord. Amen. And and you can serve him and you abound more and more because and he says here, for this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that you should abstain from fornication, that every one of you should know how to possess his vessels in sanctification and in honor, not in the lust of conspicuous and this conspicuous concupiscence is a sexual thing, even as the Gentiles which know not God, that no man go beyond and defraud his brother in any manner, because that the Lord is the avenger of all such as we also have forewarned you and testify. For God hath not called us to uncleanliness, but unto holiness. Amen. So again here we see ourselves uh, uh, trying to keep our bodies under subjection, <coughs> trying to uh, obey God, and when, listen, when these foolish thoughts come into your mind, listen, if you'll just take a minute, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will warn you, and you need to push those things out of your heart, out of your mind, because, listen, anything, if you, if you, if you sit and feast upon these things, listen, that's a sin. Amen. And the thing of it is, then if you're not careful, you'll put it into action. And then you're going to really suffer the consequences. And now I, I know we think about things, and if we can get them out of our mind and get them away from us, listen, that's the thing to do. Amen. We do not need to sit there and, and think upon these things and, and wonder, say, well, I can do this and nobody will know it. Listen, they will. Mm -hmm. Because listen, if you're if you're God's child, eventually. Uh, you're going to see a chastisement, and you're, you will confess that sin. And the world will know it, and the people will know it. So, listen, you, you need to tell your flesh this this morning. Listen, eventually, I'm going to suffer the chastisement of God. And if I don't confess it, if I don't never confess it, maybe the world won't know. But listen, I'm going to stand in front of God one day, and I'm going to confess that sin, and the whole world will know. The whole, mm -hmm. the whole people that are there, I'll confess that. And so, these are some of the things that you can that you can threaten the flesh with, because the flesh does not like to admit that it's wrong. Right. Regardless of what it does, if it if they if they kill somebody or whatever, they'll say I had to do it because he's trying to kill me. They'll, the flesh does not like to be uh, uh, criticized. It does not like to say it's wrong. And so here is some of the things that we need to think about when we keep our body under subjection and when we are a living sacrifice for the Lord Jesus Christ and God. He says here, I want to read it just a little bit more and we'll close. Uh, for, in verse uh, uh, 4 of Romans 13, For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office. Now, I want to I want to bring something to your attention this morning, and I told you a while ago about the flesh, seeing the, uh, the evil in the flesh, or seeing the flesh knows what's going on with the other flesh. But here, and I know he's talking about a lot of, a lot of times they refer to the churches as, as the body and, and all of this, and uh, uh, for as we have many members in one body, and of course, but this is the flesh that he's talking about here. This flesh has many body members. And listen, they uh, here it says here. Uh, so we, being many, are one body in Christ, and, and every one member of one another. And of course, we're we're seeing the church in a picture there. But again, each member of a body does not do the same thing, and where. One member of the body has a desire to uh, teach a Sunday school lesson. 
One member has a, 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 a to to come and clean the church building. One member has a body to a, a, a desire, and the Lord is blessing him by him doing something else. All the members does not zero in on the same thing, and that this morning is something that we need to think about. Why don't so and so do like I do? Well, listen, they're not geared the way you're geared. Right. They're not. They're not spoken to by the Holy Spirit like you're spoken to the Holy Spirit, because and Paul makes mention if they were all eyes and are all ears, we'd all be alike. Listen, we're not alike, and we uh, we come together as a machine, and one gear turns one thing and one gear turns another, but all gears don't turn the same thing. And so when when we get it. You know, I get to thinking, well, why don't they do like I do? Why don't they do this and why don't they? Listen, that's the flesh. That's the flesh telling you this. But listen, if you just take, just think about it, we don't all do the same thing. Mm -hmm. I just don't do what somebody else does and somebody else don't do what I do. And the thing of it is, I don't need to criticize that person because he don't do like I do. And you don't need to criticize somebody else because of the way they do. But the thing of it is, all of, all of these things work together for the good. Amen. And so uh, we're 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 a machine. And uh, if one part breaks down, listen, the other part will try to take its job for, until it gets back and and keep the machine going. But we cannot all we cannot all be a cog that turns one way and all the same size and everything because it just don't work that way. Amen. Right? And so we need to we need to when when we're we're looking when we're you know, the devil he'll call you over to one side and say, Well why, you know, you did this, why didn't he do that? Well, the Lord wasn't blessing him. The Lord wasn't telling him to do this. Listen, I have to I have to I have to believe that this morning that God Amen. works with me and the Holy Spirit works with me a far greater more than he does Brother Larry. Or, or Brother uh, Justin, or anybody else. The Lord works with me about one thing, and he works with somebody else about something else, Man. and he works with somebody else about the same. And, and you know, two or three of us may agree on something. But the thing of it is, as an individual, we're working for the Lord, and, and, and if, if we're pleasing the Lord, then we don't have to please uh, the flesh for somebody else. Okay? Amen. But, you know, these are some of the things that we need to think about, and it'll, it will help us to be more of a living sacrifice to the Lord. It'll, 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 it'll help us to uh, think, well, uh, I need to, uh, I need just to be closer to the Lord. I don't need to be murmuring about something or displeased about something because, uh, you know, hey, we was talking this morning in the church, uh, you know, and I, I was, I've been listening to these returns on these, uh, on these uh, election things. And, uh, you know, I thought to myself, well, what in the world is going to happen? But I got to thinking, you know, and, and uh, uh, I lived through, I lived through Obama, mm -hmm. and he's blessed. The Lord has blessed me. And listen, if Donald Trump gets it, if Hillary Clinton gets it, whoever gets it, listen, he's going to take care of me. He's right. Going, and, and he promised me here that he'll take care of me. So I don't need to. I don't need to. I, that's that's something that uh, the devil called me over here and say, hey, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Think about this. Well, when I do that, I'm listening to Him. And listen, I could be in there studying God's Word. I could be singing and humming a, a good song to the Lord. I could be thinking about something that I could do to help somebody. And so, I don't need that. <laughs> I just don't need to go there. Amen. And so, uh, we, we, can, we can be closer to Him.